Hello again. Uh, it was some time ago that I first introduced you to this, the QHY8L uh, imaging camera. Um, we did the sort of the out of the box review, and at that point, obviously, I hadn't had a chance to use it. And you know, that was basically as far as it went. Since then, it's uh, well, it, it's been quite a journey to be honest. Um, I did have a serious issue with my images when I first started using this camera, uh, and uh, you know, I was sort of getting to the stage where I was ready for hurling it across my garden fence and bouncing it down my garden and everything. Uh, as it is, the, the problem turned out not to be the fault of the camera, it was actually a, a ground loop and I'll go into that in a, in a moment and just show an example of the, the results that I was getting. Um, as a result of that, I was exploring all sorts of things. Uh, I went in through my, my, my processing, uh, I went through um, working out with with flats and darks and you know I actually learned a lot on the way even though it was really frustrating and um, one thing that I did pick up uh, amongst all this lot is um, with my processing and I, I used a different piece of software to, to have a go at my processing and I had a go with nebulosity and I have to say that um, I'm absolutely sold on nebulosity and it will lead to another video I am going to do a video review of the the processing um, side of nebulosity and and so sort of, you know give a tutorial on it as well because I was absolutely blown away by the results that I got from the processing I mean obviously it didn't fix the issue that I was having um, but what I will do is I will show you an example of one of the images that I was getting so that if you if you see something similar you know it's, it's possibly an avenue that you might want to explore yourself and it was all down to uh, what we call uh, ground loop and it's all to do with pieces of equipment of being at different potentials and you're basically getting a voltage going uh, around your piece of equipment and once I'd sorted that out um, it, it, it just cured my problems as, as you'll see as I work through this review um, one thing I would recommend is if you are using um, a camera, you know, a, an imaging camera with your scope equipment, I would actually recommend that you use a separate power supply for uh, for your camera. I know a lot of people, myself included, have got a sort of a, a big box with a, a, a decent sized power supply in it, 12 volt power supply, that I power my mount and I power my, my uh, other bits and pieces, you know, my dew bands and, and all the rest of it. And you know, obviously, I had the camera powered up from the same power supply, and that's what was causing the issue. And like I say, it's all to do with ground loops. And in fact, some people have even reported uh, because of sort of grounding issues with different sorts of power supplies that they can actually feel a tingle sometimes off a camera or even off a mount if they sort of put the right to the polar scope. Sometimes you get sort of this tingle, and it's all to do with voltage leaking into equipment and then passing over to different pieces of equipment that are attached to it and everything. This is all covered um, on, on my website, Astronomy Shed, where I basically went through everything, I documented everything that I tried. Uh, so I would recommend, like I say, if you, if you do get a camera such as this, run it off its own power supply and it, it might just save you an old world of trouble. Um, and this is the sort of images that I was turning out because of this, this, this loop, if you like. Right, so this is a picture of the issue that I was having, uh, and believe me, this is a mild case. Uh, as you can see, I had this really bad sort of red gradient on the left-hand side, and a green gradient on the right-hand side, and then there's a sort of this dark patch here. Now, granted, there is a slight vignette in that picture, uh, because I didn't use any flats in it. But that wasn't the issue. Um, you know, the issue was these these coloured gradients, and obviously, the more that I stretched the picture, the more that they came up. And you know, I, once I'd sorted out this ground loop issue that I seemed to have, um, it, it just went away. Uh, so what I'll do now is I'll just go through a couple of the pictures that I've taken, um, and I really, I've only taken maybe maybe ten, maybe fifteen images in total with this camera. Um, so let's just have a look at some more. Right, so this was my first uh, successful image with the camera once I've got the issue sorted out. Uh, as you can see, it's the Orion Nebula, and I've picked up the Running Man there. Um, I've also got a lovely big dust bunny just here uh, that I've since got rid of by doing a little bit of cleaning. Uh, granted, it's noisy, and it's less than perfect, and it probably needed more time on it, uh, both length of exposures and number of exposures. But, you know, to be honest, to say that I was sort of right at the bottom of the learning curve at this stage, I don't think it actually came out too bad. 
Um, also, the, the field of view in this camera is absolutely huge. You know, you get massive, great big areas in there. But also, the actual files, the resolution of the pictures is very high. I mean, this is actually um, half size at the moment. And if I just bring it up to full size, like so, you can see that, the, you know, the resolution's really nice in it. Um, it's starting to get quite a good bit of depth in these, these sort of nebulous zones in the Orion. Um, so, you know, you can see that I was slowly starting to, to build up my, my imaging skills uh, until next I went on to a globular cluster, which is this one. Now, this one was on a, a less than perfect night, and it was actually quite late when I'd managed to set up, and, and M13 had sort of just come over my house, and I, it was just a quick setup and a go, basically. Um, you know, it's a slight improvement again. We I'd put a little bit more time into it, and you can see that my processing skills were starting to get a little bit better. Uh, we've got a little faint fuzzy in there as well. Uh, you know, overall, it's it's an average picture, but I'm, at the time I was quite happy with it. You know, to say that it was maybe this was probably maybe the, like the sixth picture that I'd, I'd taken with the camera, and probably the second or third successful one. Um, so next, I started to get a little bit more ambitious. And they had to go at something that was uh, a little bit more nebulous. Um, this is uh, NGC 281, the Pac-Man Nebula. Again, it probably needed more time on it. Uh, and I, I, Although I put quite a bit in it already. And just the sheer number of stars blew me away in this one. Um, you know, it's okay when you're looking on, on internet forums and you see other people's pictures and you sort of, like, you know, wow, look at the amount of stars in that. And, it, you know, it, it really surprises you. And then when you turn out one of your own images that's that's got just as many stars in it, you know it, it's like um, it's like viewing Saturn for the first time over and over again. And you you know you need you need to sort of go and wake your wife and kids up and, and say come and have a look at this. Um, and again, I started to get even more ambitious um, and go on to this one. I would say this one was probably my first proper attempt. You know, I'd sort of hit my point on the learning curve where I, I almost knew what I was doing. Um, this was a result of probably about 28 uh, or 30 five minute exposures on the uh, on the boards group, sort of M81, M82. And you can see that there's lots and lots of detail come out in the lanes on the 81. And on the 82, the colors in there and the sort of, you know, you can see this, the, the red sort of, fluxing starting to come out there a little bit and if I'd spent more time on it I'd probably have got you know quite a little bit more um, you can see there's another little fuzzy just there off to the left hand side and I'll just sort of zoom in and give you a closer look at this the M81 so you can actually see how much detail the camera's picking up and of course after you get something like this you start to get even more ambitious and that's when I went on to this Now this one I was really, really pleased with, uh, and I call this one uh, M106 and lots of friends um, for quite a simple reason is that I've, I've taken it. Uh, this is actually about 30 10 minute exposures. Uh, and you, obviously you've got the 106 there in the middle and you can see you know quite a few fuzzies around it. And actually we're looking at this at half size at the moment. I will increase it in a moment. Uh, but what shocked me when I when I was processing this and, and why I want to spend even more time on this particular subject is because of the wide field, everywhere I looked there were galaxies, there are galaxies spread all over the place in this image. So if we just go to the full size, like so, you can see the 106 there and this little friend of its is just over there, but then we've got this one and... There's one here, and then if we scroll down, as you move across, there's one here, and moving across again, there's just everywhere you look, there are faint fuzzies all over the place. Um, there's quite a large grouping over on the right hand corner, which will just move it over a little bit. There are two here at 90 degrees to each other. Uh, but you look here, there's one, and there's one here, and as we move up to the top, we get there's one here, there's one here, there's one here, 
and you know they're just all over the place and I, I just really like this photo it's just everywhere that you look you seem to find more and more galaxies um, and they are I mean there are actually I counted over 40 galaxies in this image and you know I have to say that I'm really really happy with how it's come out and I am going to spend even more time and get some more data on this one and um, you know really work at it because I'm just over the moon and, and blown away with how well it's come out so what's the conclusions that I've come to with the QHY 8L right so in conclusion what are my opinions of the QHY 8L well it's described as QHY's entry level camera this and the price does reflect that it's a very very reasonable price but the feature set and the results I don't think do I think they way way surpass that um, I'm really really happy with the results that I've got once I've sort of got used to the camera um, you know and to, to have got the results that I've got within sort of you know 10 imaging sessions I think is is quite outstanding I mean, I'm, I'm really really happy and yes I did the happy dance and everything and who wouldn't um, so would I recommend the ATEL? Absolutely, yes. Will you have issues? No doubt whatsoever, you'll have problems. But having said that, uh, the support mechanism is all out there, either be the QHY uh, website um, or internet forums such as my own at um, Astronomy Shed dot co dot uk because there's always people out there that have either got the same camera or had the same issues with a different camera and the, you know the every anybody is just out there to help you out and you know nine times out of ten any problems that you do have will will very quickly be solved so yeah i'm very very happy with it i would definitely recommend it and would i have it again absolutely yes and that's it for this one so once again thanks for watching